What's up guys, Devil Dog Gamer here, and we're taking a look at the new update for World War 3. If you've never seen this game before, World War 3 was re originally released in 2018 as a Battlefield killer. And while it was a pretty good early access game, uh, the numbers quickly died out and the game died itself until it was abandoned. It was recently picked up in I think 2021 to be a free-to-play game and re-released, and this is now the second Battle Pass update with content. You guys know what I say, content is king and this one added a lot of content we're gonna kind of go over you know how this game's doing the future of it and show off a little bit about the content that they actually released so first of all they released the QBZ 191 assault rifle it's pretty good um, it's not too bad I haven't leveled it up too too much one of the big things they added was this Piat the PF3 now back in the day in the original game they had an RPG with a tandem warhead to take out vehicles the vehicles are overpowered in this game without that but this changes that because not only do you get heat rounds, you get a tandem and a thermobaric for infantry. So this is a huge addition to the game to kind of help balance out um, the vehicle gameplay, vehicle and the infantry gameplay. Um, on top of that, you've got a few other things that were added to the game. Uh, the Type 16, the Tank Destroyer, Type 16 Tank Destroyer. You also get the new Bumblebee drone that drops munitions. I wonder where they got that idea from. Um, let me go over here to this strike. We have the Type 10 main battle, battle tank, tank from Japan. Haven't really experienced this thing too much. Um, on top of that, you also get a new map called Tokyo, which uh, is pretty cool. It's a tight quarters map. And you also get a new game mode called Fubar, which is infantry 20 versus 20 with revive. So you'll actually get to revive down people on this, this game mode. Now, this is the fourth game mode they've added to this game, um, and this is going to be kind of where the problem lies. We're going to talk about these new, the new weapons, the new update, how the, how's the health and the overall outlook of the future for World War III. During the closed beta of World War III for the new free-to-play model, the player base was pretty steady. Uh, there was a good number of people. You never really had any issues finding games nor, you know, getting into lobbies. That's not the case as much. It's pretty hard to get into full lobbies. Uh, even with the new content release and the new, you know, season, you would think a lot of people want to get in and try the content. Not so much the case. On top of that, they also seem to change the helicopter controls to where you can't even fly the helicopters. Um, I, I haven't been able to fly them. Everyone's complaining about them on Steam. Um, the choppers are just absolutely useless now. But the thing is... You know, with everything they're doing for the game to bring it back content-wise, we still run into kind of the same problems, and it's kind of keeping the player base back. One of the biggest problems is, as an American player, I don't ever see a U.S. server. I've never seen a U.S. server in this game, and, you know, for most games, that's not really a big deal. I can play on EU servers on most games and get away with it. Not this one. I end up on Singapore servers. I end up on Dubai servers. I end up on EU servers. All, you know, EU servers is the only one that's kind of playable for me as a US player, but that's even kind of being generous. Uh, hit detection with any sort of latency issue on in this game is horrendous and noticeable. A full mag, maybe two rounds will hit. Uh, if I'm playing on a Singapore server, I'm not going to hit anybody. I can dump, you know, an entire 200 round belt into somebody, and I'm not going to hit a single person. That really just takes the fun and the joy out of it, especially when, you know, I might get uh, two Singapore, ser Singapore servers, a Dubai server, and then one EU server. Do you really think I'm going to continue wasting my time with said servers? Absolutely fucking not. And normal people who are not in this kind of business to play video games daily aren't going to waste their time with it either, especially when there's a hundred other games to play. It doesn't matter if this game's free or not. Um, and that, that in lies the issue. If you want to keep your players around you not only do you need to keep content which they're doing and they're doing a fantastic job of the content you need to keep it to it the player environment is is healthy and it's good um you know forcing other players and everybody into eu or asian servers uh even if they're us on the other side of the globe is just is beyond nuts to me you're alienating an entire player base that's like saying you know oh we're only gonna have us servers sorry everybody in europe you know and it doesn't make any sense for me and then in lies also the problem is the player, the amount of players playing this game are dropping significantly and they added a new game mode on top of it. So now say, you know, I only want to play one certain game mode. I don't want to play the new one. It just dwindles down the amount of people actually playing in these game modes. Um, you know, if they kept it to one or two game modes and just kept adding content until the player base got higher, sure, you can justify having multiple game modes now. Because I don't want to play Team Deathmatch. I don't want to play the new FUBAR game mode. I really don't. 
Uh, I want to play for the mass, you know, the vehicles, the domination type stuff like that. So I'm already alienating half of the game modes right there. So the people that are on those game modes have one less person to match make with. And I'm sure that goes for a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of people want to play the new game modes. I only got to play the new game mode once. Um, most of the time it would match make, match make, match make, and it would be like, okay, we're not finding anybody, opening it to all maps and game modes. And then I would get into a different game mode. Um, you know, same with the new map. I've only played the new map once because it would just match make forever and then finally open all the doors to everybody. So in that sense, you're already, you, you have so little players, why are you adding more game modes to alienate half of them? Well, I think the developers are on the right track with this. Content, 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 keep adding these seasons, more content. Um, at the same time, they need to start working on the server issues. Uh, start getting, you know, region lock servers if you can. Or, you know, there should be no reason I connect to a Singapore server from the east coast of the United States. And there's no reason vice versa. That just sucks for every player involved in that scenario. I don't know why that's a thing. I think it's more of the cheap route is where they found cheaper servers and they just make everybody go because it is a free-to-play game and at the same time they're trying to make their money with a really low player base on the free-to-play server. So, of course, you know, they're going to have to cut some corners somewhere. I like the guns and tanks and stuff that we're getting. And if they keep doing that and they keep adding more guns, attachments, tanks, people might come back. I mean, that's, that's what people want. They want cool shit. They want new shit. Um... And that's what keeps games going, especially free-to-play games. Like, that's why people keep coming back to War Thunders, because they got a new update every month month or two with new stuff, and it just keeps you going for that kind of thing. They're kind of on that same path, where they could do it with these seasons, but the player base is so horrifically slow, small right now, and the servers are so jacked that with matchmaking that I don't know how long they could keep it up. To be honest, I mean, you know, free to play, you need somebody to buy something. How much, I mean, you maybe got a thousand players. I, I, it's not gonna pay anybody's bills, let alone infrastructure bills for the servers and the developers. I just don't know how they're gonna keep pulling it off like this. Um, I still think it's got, it, it does kind of have a future. It, you know, if they, if they sort it out and they fix the server issues and they add more content and they don't, they keep it, you know, maybe remove some game modes to, um, to kind of reflect how small the, pool, the player pool is right now. You know, you, you get into better servers that have better tick rates uh, with more, you know, no latency issues where, you know, rounds are actually hitting where they're supposed to do. People might come back to this, but a lot of people got burned from the original installment of this game. So, you know, trying to revive a name that's already been, you know, held under bad breath is, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was hopeful on this at the same time. Now I'm kind of like, well, it might not make it. I, I want to know what you guys think. Like, I, you know, nothing on the gameplay here was fantastic because I really couldn't get into the, the new stuff or use the new stuff, but I sure as shit tried for you guys. But let me know what you guys think. Is World War III something you still try to kind of check out? Or is it pretty much done skis for you? What do you think of the future of the game? Do you think it's going to make it? Or do you think it's going to die out? Let me know down in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.